Hello, it's Magic Turtle 643 using my old camera because my new camera right here for some reason is doing this nonsense. So if anybody knows what that noisy mess is about or how to fix it, um, please let me know in the comments. Today I'm going to do one of those tag videos featuring a survey about writing inspirations originally created by Fancy Nancy Ketchup, but the video I found out about this from was the SWAT Sisters, so you should check out both channels. Alright, let's jump right in. Question 1. What book first inspired you to write? I guess the writer that inspired me to write was Patricia C. Reed who wrote uh, three books on dragons called, I think, Searching for Dragons, Talking to Dragons, and Dealing with Dragons, or some variation thereof. And it was a very interesting set of fantasy novels, young adult, I think, that were very funny. I recommend those. I don't know if she's still famous or still writing, but they're good books. Question two. In terms of your current writing, what books do you look to for inspiration? This one's tricky because I sort of write a mashup between like fantasy, comedy, mystery, crime, and magical realism, but typically the ones I go to are magical realism novels because they have a very interesting flair about writing a book in a very normal way where every characters have real human problems like love and emotion and heartbreak and stuff like that, but there's also something supernatural thrown in. I've talked about this before in other videos, but that's where I get most of my inspiration. Question three. When you have problems with writing descriptions, what books do you look to? This is another tricky one because I can't really specifically say anything, but a lot of modern writers, like really modern ones, like ones that are writing adult books today, have some of the most interesting descriptions imaginable. Not like that old typical cliche stuff where it's a really flowery language, but finding really interesting and poetic ways to describe something physically, like using words you wouldn't even think of, like using a verb as a descriptor word, or like a noun and turning that into an adjective in an interesting and new way. Kevin Brockmeyer is a good one. Um, Jennifer Egon. Visit from the Goon Squad, that's a good one. Question four, what about dialogue? Okay, I come from a theater background, like drama class, and I was a theater minor in, in uh, college, and that's where I get my dialogue inspiration, is like a scene. Like, it's really not just like a part of a book where people are talking, but it's it's like a you're watching a play or almost a movie. And I know it's a little dangerous to sort of fall into that Hollywood... Mm that Hollywood mindset where people are like jibber-jabbering back and forth and like delivering funny one-liners, but that is sort of where I get my information. You know, I try to make it funny, I try to make it quick-witted, everybody's using some kind of fresh heightened language. I think John Green has talked about this before actually, where people don't talk like they normally do in real life, where they're just like, hey, what's up? Not much, what's up with you? Not much, what are you doing? Oh, you know, oh cool. Like, you cut that stuff out. Where do I get inspiration for character development? That's a really tricky one. I don't know, like, I don't think I, like like I said with everything else, I don't usually have like an arsenal of uh, art authors that I pick from and pick and choose their strategies, but character development is a huge deal for me and I generally start with something interesting like either an occupation or some crazy quirk about the character, and quirk isn't really the right word. For example, my, my last book I finished a while back, the main character was missing her right arm which was, well, her right hand from a tragic roller coaster accident, which is just something I thought was very interesting and compelling and would sort of launch the rest of the story and everything in her mindset would be sort of related to that and her fears and insecurities about it, but also her her backlash to wanting to be very uh, independent and proud of who she was despite her disability, if you can call it that, because she was very able-bodied. And that's what I like to start with, is some thing, some tangible thing, or some backstory that makes the character who they are. And it's actually really easy at that point, so I, I recommend not starting with a person that's sort of blank and then adding stuff, but starting with a thing and then make the person come from that. And finally, where do I get inspiration for plot development? Um, I don't want to say video games, but like I'm very heavy on plot, so Everything that happens in the book is the book to me. It's not just about characters talking. It's like things are happening, action is going on, and you're moving from one position of the book to the next, and the character is influencing that like a video game. So like a video game like Bioshock Infinite, I don't know if you've ever played that, but it's very story-driven, and that's what interests me, where it's like you move from one level to the next to the next, and the character is basically on this journey. Whether it's an adventure novel or not, the character is trying to overcome an onslaught of obstacles, very much like a video game, to treat to reach an end goal. Okay, last question. What passage from another book encapsulates the tone of your writing? Well, I've been searching through my bookshelf for the perfect excerpt that reflects everything I want to accomplish in my writing, everything I'm about, everything I want to be, and I think I found the perfect book. So if you'll indulge me, I'm going to turn to page, I'm just joking. Okay, so I just pulled this off the shelf and I don't really know that it fits perfectly well, but it is a sci-fi dystopian novel with a lot of humor in it, so I do think this encapsulates what I try to do. It was a special pleasure to see things eaten, to see things blackened and changed. With the brass nozzle in his fists, with this great python spitting its venomous kerosene upon the world, the blood pounded in his head, and his hands were the hands of some amazing conductor playing all the symphonies of blazing and burning to bring down the tatters and charcoal ruins of history. 